This is the National Geographic Channel. Log cabins. Rugged. Timeless. And connected to the land. I'm Nate Heim, and I build log cabin homes here in the Northlands of Minnesota. I work with the finest crew around. You betcha. Using century-old techniques, we pour ourselves into each and every cabin, bringing the past into the present. And we're building a Norwegian-style log home in the heart of Gilmer, Texas. But if we can't get our walls to line up, this home may never come together. Ooh, that don't look good. No matter what happens, my crew and I are on a mission to build log cabin homes all across this country. I'm on my way down to Gilmer, Texas to meet up with Eric and Janice Metzger. There's a lot of pride here, and Texas is a heartland. You know, cattle ranches and cowboy hats and look at that, a real Texas Longhorn. The saying is, everything's bigger in Texas. We really gotta make this home a big statement. On the phone, Eric was telling me he's a fire chief, and that's really cool to me because, you know, they get the respect like military. I mean, they're risking their lives. I tell you, I really got a feel for Texas on the way here. That's great. <laughs> we have a beautiful state. Looks like you got a lot of little animals running around. This is the spirit of East Texas. Yeah. Our, our family, our farms, our animals. Well, this is gorgeous property here. Tell me a little bit about your land. I retired out of Dallas in the fire department up yeah, there uh -huh. after about 28 years. 22 as chief, yeah. and we were looking for something just a little more serene, a little peaceful. Yeah. And we've actually got a site up on top that I think might work for the build. It overlooks a ridge line to the west. We wanted to get back to our rural roots, uh, get out here scratching the dirt, raise yeah. some animals, yeah. and uh, see if we can kind of almost live off the grid. They say that log home living is a lifestyle, and we're looking forward to experiencing that. Well, it sounds amazing. I'd love to take a look at your property with you. Come on. All right. <laughs> What style or what size log home are you thinking about? Well, we've been uh, kind of looking at the Texas uh, area and, you know, they've got these massive logs, but they're flat on both sides. Yeah. And, you know, we're kind of looking at something like that. We create a product, uh, it's a traditional Norwegian style log home, flattened on each side of the log. Uh -huh. So you have flat walls on inside and out. That's something we could create for you guys. That sounds yeah. great. I like what Nate's saying about the uh, Norwegian style. I'd like to see that incorporated in our build. All the animals on our farm have a home and now we just need one. We've got a spot. I want to check with you. It just looks like it's, it's just made probably for it. the yeah. place for it to go. This is a gold mine right here. This is the perfect spot. I can see it here. We're going to have a Texas-style great room, big living room here. Eric, you said you retired as a fire chief, right? Yes. You could have your loft right here in the back, so have your office and your fire chief memorabilia. Yes. And we'll have that extend out to your own balcony. That sounds all great, but I haven't seen anything about porches yet. This is Texas. What about Texas-sized porches? I got it. We're going to have big porches out here, porches that extend all the way out here. And over here, you're going to have a porch so you can watch your goats. Back, that'd be great. we got to do it Texas style. That's right. Right. Well, I think that sounds great. I got my notepad with. I'd be happy to draw it out for you guys. Let's head back to the trucks and look at it. OK. All right. All right. I'm looking forward to the loft area, be able to gather my thoughts, do a little bit of work and relax. He seems real enthusiastic, and that's what I really like. Eric really liked that loft idea. He deserves it. He's worked really hard. A big Texas fireplace? Yeah. That would be nice. Christmas in a log house. Hey, that, that's, mm. that's heaven on earth right there. <laughs> the Metzger's cabin will be a 2100 square foot Norwegian style log masterpiece. The first level will feature a great room with an open floor plan that includes a spacious kitchen and dining room, perfect for entertaining and relaxing. A few steps away from the great room lies Eric and Janice's master bedroom. Two guest bedrooms are nestled across the great room, ready to receive family and friends. The second story loft will be dedicated to an office. This Lone Star log cabin will be surrounded on all sides by deep porches, from which Eric and Janice can take in the bounty of their beautiful Texas homestead. I'm overwhelmed. Yeah? <laughs> This is just, this is fabulous. This is exactly what we were thinking. I'm going to make this happen for you guys. That sounds great. Yeah? Put her there. Let's get after All right. Well, I'm glad you guys are loading the 
stove is cold out. You're darn right it's cold out. I don't think my saw's going to run. My toes are cold. Ah, uh, all that complaining. This is where we're born and raised, folks. This is why we live here. We've done it before. We built log homes in this temperature, and I got a hot one right here. And the good thing is, it's in the southern warm climates. Hey, nice. Ooh, yeah. where at? Texas. Oh, that should be warmer there, huh? Oh, yeah. This is for Eric and Janice Metzger. It's pretty cool. They want to build in the woods of East Texas. Eric's a retired fire chief in Dallas. They want to live off the land. They want to hunt, farm, fish. And this is going to be a traditional Norwegian style home. What's a Norwegian style? Well, the Norwegian style is where we take the logs and put them on our bandsaw mill. The logs are round on the top and bottom, but the inside is flat wall and mm -hmm. the outside is flat wall. The notch is kind of a diamond shape. There's some characteristics that you might like. You'll learn a lot as we go. The floor plan isn't your classic rectangular shape. There's bump outs all over the place. It's going to be very crucial that we have this laid out correctly to the foundation mm -hmm. specs. The Metzger's plans are extremely detailed, especially the roof system. We're in the dead middle of winter, so this build won't come easy. Are you cold, Corey? Yeah, I'm freezing. Well, I'll tell you what, if you want to complain about cold, that's one thing. But in a second here, we're going to start putting blocks down. I don't want you to complain about sweat. Yeah, I don't think I'll complain about that. All right, well. Let's please go do that. All right, <laughs> well, let's get those foundation blocks going. I'll, I'll kind of guide you in the direction here. All right. Let's warm it up. We're here to build dreams. It's gonna be perfect, lifesaver. It's like having another guy here. When we first started the business, we never had a bandsaw mill, so we had to make all our flat cuts with a chainsaw. It took a long time. It took a couple days just to flatten logs. These are the plate logs. They're actually gonna be milled on three sides. The inside and the outside, we actually wanna give it a hand hood look. So we're taking the uh, power planer to it and make it look uh, a little more rustic, not so perfect like a bandsaw cutter. We want to make it look like they did it back in the old day with an ax. Norwegian style, it's a real beautiful style. It's Something we don't do a whole lot of. We usually do full scribe, full round logs, but this is a good change of pace. A lot more measuring and leveling involved in this style. I kind of like that. We use a tool called a scribe to draw the contour of one log onto the next. This allows for extremely accurate measurements so the logs can fit perfectly together. Hand scribing is a technique that's been around for centuries and to this day provides the tightest fit of all handcrafting styles. Norwegian style log homes are very unique. There's some different steps that you gotta take to prep the log. Being that these logs are, are so tall uh, because of the diameter, they almost get square on the top and bottom. So our first step is, is to cut the edges back to give us a round log and basically a big scarf. And then we go back over the top of it with the log wizard to give it that hand new look. that these templates kind of make it so you have consistency in your scarves so this will be one of the scarves you can see here how the scarves come to almost a diamond shape it's a really neat feature on this house this is the first scarf we're going to cut uh, this one would be after the notch is already done the ridge poles we're running pretty short on logs so we're gonna mill these with the bark on them draw a knife them down and we're gonna put them up in Texas winch isn't going up and down 
The motor on the mill is starting, but the winch won't lower. The winch is the part of the mill that lowers the blade up and down so you can adjust your cut. The switch that controls the winch isn't working and I don't know why. We came over here and put the ridge pole on here and we have nothing in the switch and that's kind of a game stopper for us right now because we need the winch for the last piece is the ridge pole and we're not getting power to the winch to turn it. Could be, being that it's 20 below. We got a front come in. We got about a half inch of ice on the roads. Everything is covered in ice right now. It's probably this box or the switch. It's gotta call my dad. He usually has a good idea when this stuff goes down. He's good at fixing stuff. If that don't work, we're gonna have to get a whole new box, which is gonna set us back about a half day, which is really gonna make things tight. Looks pretty clean in here. I don't get that. I thought the electrical box was a problem, but the inside looks fine. Uh-oh, I think we fried it. When we test the battery, there's a spark, so we know the battery isn't the problem. It could be the switch, but who knows? Hopefully my dad will know what to do. You got it fixed. Well, it's not going up and down. We tried jumping it to see the switch or the box. Yeah. The battery's good, right? Yeah, yeah, the battery's good. The engine fires. All you can do is a process of elimination. Yeah. This is your hot wire right yeah. here. And then one of these is just a switch. Oh, ho! The switch. It's a switch. Well, look at that. That'll get us through until we get a new box in here. Uh, a lot of times these switches are fine when it's warm, and then when it gets cold, if they get a little moisture in them, they frost up, yeah. and that's when they start acting up, and it's always on the coldest day. Well, that's for sure. Since the switch wasn't working, we weren't getting power from the battery to the winch. This is a test, and only a test. Yep. Works. Works? So we might just have to touch the wires together? Yep. Uh, until we... That goes down. There's your up. So my dad showed me how to hot wire from the battery directly to the winch. Well, Dad, I think you sold it. Yeah, at least this will get us going right. until we get a new switch. It will. Until yeah. then, you just have to touch the wires and... Yeah, I can handle that. Make it work. All right. Thanks, All right. Dad. See ya. See ya. Up to Daisy. Oh, right there. I would have figured it out eventually, but having my dad's a great resource. That's what teamwork's all about. We can't lose this one. Hope she fit. It fits perfectly. You mean perfect like a Texas barbecue? Yeah, it's looking good. Let's go check it out. It's a view, huh? Looks really good. Isn't that something? And the way you guys put that hand hewn look into it. No, that's Texas style, isn't it? We don't build Norwegian style cabins very often, but man, this one turned out a real beaut. It's really going to be a special piece. Nate, probably the best thing I like about this house is it's in Texas where it's going to be nice and warm. I think it's time we take a break, a little bit of fun in the sun, huh? All right, let's, let's go. go. Watch out, Texas, we're coming for you. While the logs make their way to Texas, I got to stop to talk to the Evans brothers. They've got a huge lodge just outside of Park City, Utah that needs an upgrade. Oh, you got quite the place here. Tell me a little bit about what, there's got to be history behind this place. This is the Timber Moose Lodge. Wow. We rent it out to corporate retreats, destination weddings, and big family groups. Uh, we have 13 bedrooms, 16 Jeez. bathrooms, and it sleeps 60. Oh my gosh. You told me to come here to look at a front door? This is the door. Obviously, it's one of the first things people come up to when they get here, and we feel like it's a little bit of an eyesore. We love this place. When we take you inside, you'll see that it's yeah. big and grand and majestic. Yeah. And this is the first impression we give people yeah. when they arrive. To help Nate understand the grandeur of this place, we decided we should give him a tour. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow, look at this. I love the log trusses. Look at the character on the logs. So cool. This 26,000 square foot mansion has normal walls, but at the frame, it's the biggest log cabin I've ever seen. Wow, this is a grand room. Look at the character. Holy smokes. Now that I've seen the beauty of this lodge, I'm really excited to create an entryway fit for this amazing cabin. You guys have so much beauty going on in there, and this front entryway is so grand, but this is not so grand. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, what kind of ideas do you have for this front entryway? I want something that's over the top. 
we gotta wrap this door in some big beams. I mean, this is a timber moose lodge. We gotta have a big door. What would you think if we had a carving of a moose looking like it's running right out that door? Oh, that's what I'm talking about. Huh? I know a carver who could do a great door for you. What do you think, a big massive door? That's what we want, I said we'd do it. I got a project in Texas right now, but what I tell you I can do is I'll get a hold of my guy who carves the doors, and when that thing is ready, I'll come back, I'll install it for you. Huh? Let's do it. We're gonna make sure it streams Timber Moose Lodge. Working on this lodge is gonna be incredible, but right now I gotta catch up with the rest of the crew in Texas and get started on the Metzger's new log home. Here we are in Gilmer, Texas. The logs have arrived safely from Minnesota and the foundation was already set before we got here. We're ready to get this build started, so I'm gonna round up my dad and my project manager, Grizzly Bob, and go over the plans. Hey guys. Hey, Nate, Nate. Well, sorry, I'm the last one of the three amigos here down in Texas. But look at yeah. this weather. A little different in Minnesota, eh? Hey. A lot uh, different in Minnesota. Yeah, <laughs> I'll take it. This is gonna be a fun build. It's a real open floor plan. Eric Mester's a retired fire chief. He's got a lot of memorabilia, so we gotta have a little man cave. I, I call it the fireman cave. Fireman cave. <laughs> yeah, yeah, hey, let's hey. work safe, let's get her done, boys. All right, hey, all right. Good. The first step when arriving at a build site is get the logs off the truck so the truckers can get on their way. Before we leave a log yard, we label each log with a letter and number so we know where each log goes. Ridgeboro, second log, outlet. A letter tells us which corner the log goes to and the number tells us which course of logs it is. F4. That way when we're unloading these logs, it's smooth sailing. <laughs> Well, right now we're loading off the first course of log. Gorgeous day here in Texas, sun is out. We gotta get this house up. And a couple of these walls are gonna be wider. We might have two by six or we might have two by eights on those walls. We gotta make sure we mark those in. So mark them right on the floor. We have foam sill seal on the bottom of the logs. That's to protect these logs from the masonry, the weather. And keep them from rotting. You can't put white wood on top of concrete. That's a building code. You're coming next, Nathan. Get ready. The first course of logs is set over the anchor bolts that fasten it to the foundation. Drop it, drop it, drop it. Beautiful. Ready? One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, make sure we're double checking our corners. Okay. That's the first course, boys. Well, right now we're staging the second quartz of logs so we can stuff them with fiberglass insulation. Then we get these walls built up and start running the electric. Running these wires on the first courses up to about three feet is 90% of the electrical work in the log walls. We're running these power lines through here. There's actually gonna be four switches here for a lot of the house. This is the front entrance way coming in. Pull your side in just a little bit. We're going to put our switch boxes in here on the other side. On this side, yep. I want switch boxes. Or double switch boxes. Double switch yeah. box, yep. I love working with logs, but one of the disadvantages or harder things about working with logs is that when it comes to wall switches and plugs, you have to mortise holes in for each outlet box and uh, drill holes through the logs to run your wires. So it's a little bit extra work but it's well worth it. <laughs> day two, we're up to eight foot height. We're putting our tie logs in over top the doorways. It's gonna be a good day. Hopefully we'll get everything up today, start working on the trusses later this afternoon. This is the last log for the walls, then we gotta get started on the roof system. Right there. Well, now that we got all the walls up, we're kind of game plan the roof system. Uh, this is a pretty elaborate roof system. We gotta make sure this top level is all level, because when we put conventional trusses on, you gotta be on a level surface. You can't just stick them on top of a round log. So we're gonna go through, we're gonna make sure everything's level across the board. So when we get to those conventional trusses, everything lays out perfect.
Alright, okay. Uh, 111. Boy, that's a lot. Ooh, that don't look good. How come that got cut out? Boy, I'm standing. It's about four inches too short than this one. This? Yes, this. This one, this one tapered off so much it was like nothing up there. Yeah, what happened there, Nate? The walls are all supposed to be 108 inches high, but some of the walls are measuring 111 inches high. If we set the trusses, they'll be crooked. So that's only, I think, an inch and a half we gotta build up. This one we gotta cut yet with a chainsaw down, probably. As long as they're all level, then we can either build up or take down. Yeah. We just gotta level it all. Cut that so it looks like another lateral. Just like this one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, another lateral. Mm -hmm. That's exactly I it. I see what you mean. Bob's got the idea to use the resources we already have to make the fix. It's a possibility. See what the height is. Essentially, we're trying to make this log flush with this one. This piece of the log right here, if you look, we ripped this on the ground. Peter did that earlier. We were able to save that wood by taking that, flipping it on top of this log, and level everything out. No waste. Ugh. We got three of these to adjust. We gotta try to knock this out in an hour so we can get going and getting these trusses up. We're cutting a flat spot on this log so that the rafters can come down and sit on this flat. Most people think of a chainsaw as only a heavy duty tool, but in the right hands, it can do really delicate details. Look at that. Oh, there she goes. There it is. So how are you? Look at how easy that is. Yeah. Simple. Well, we got our piece fit up in there. It looks a lot better than a trim board. You know, we had to take that piece. It could have been firewood cut up in the chunks, but we salvaged it, put it to use. We basically knocked edges down on the top log. Pretty much all I gotta do now is screw it in place and ready to start getting those trusses up. The Mesker's roof system features two different kinds of trusses, conventional stick frame trusses and log trusses. The stick frame trusses are already built, but we have to assemble the log trusses before we can get started on the roof system. We finished drawing out thing, all these logs, now we're ready to start fitting them together and getting our peaks together and putting all thread in. Oh, that's good. The guys have the two log trusses built, so now it's time to make them fly. All right, guys, first truss is coming. Bring it right up. Got other truss ready? Bring it up. We're building dreams, boys. The second truss is up. Now we're ready for the ridge poles. Put some temporary posts out here on the gable ends, and then we're gonna start slapping up conventional trusses. These support posts bookend the roof system and will hold the ends of the ridge pole. Good. Work. Yep. Now that we have the log trusses set, it's time to lift up the stick frame trusses. These are much lighter in weight, so we'll attach a rafter hook to the crane to lift them up. Don't have rafter hooks? No, we don't have any. We can't use the rope to lift the trusses because the trusses aren't strong enough for us to climb up and detach the rope. Let's make a rafter hook out of something. You got a wrench in here? Yeah, these will work. There we go, look at that baby. Hey, that hook is really good. It's gonna work if we can get it done today. Each truss will be spaced two feet apart, and once we get them all up, we can bring the roofing crew and get this roof system finished up. Watch them trees up there. Okay, we're hooking up the red pole. Getting ready to set it, and then we'll be done with the roof system. How are you looking, Peter? I'm right, right on my mark. Bring him down. What do you think? Looking great. Let me come down there, I'll give you the tour. Welcome home. Well, I just can't believe what you guys have done in such a short period of time. Well, there's so much to see, guys. Sounds good. 
guys, right over here is your kitchen area. I mean, it's a big kitchen, too. Will that window be right over my kitchen sink? That's going to be right over the top of it. Yep. Oh, what a great view. I can watch the sunset while I cook dinner. Isn't that something? And then watch the wildlife go by. I mean, your animals have been so friendly around here. The dogs and the cat and the goats. You have those two sliding glass doors there. We thought to bridge that gap there, why not put a big old log right there? Well, how old do you think that tree is? Well, that tree's probably 90 to 100 years old. Wow. wow. That's, that's... That really makes you feel small. Right up here is your fire man cave. Nice. Every time you go up your staircase, you're going to walk right through this principal truss. You know you're in your man cave. Right over here, these are your two extra bedrooms. They're good-sized bedrooms, and they have beautiful views. Oh, this is going to be great. It's exceeded our expectations. It sure has. We've got one issue. An issue? I've got a tree out there that's dead standing. Uh-huh. I'd like to be able to incorporate maybe a piece of that in the build. Well, I am a sucker for logs. I guess we can go take a look at it, and maybe we'll get some ideas. Well, there she is. It's a big one. Is this a Texas yellow pine? It sure is, Nate. Oh. We had a drought in 2011, and it weakened some of our trees, and, and because of that, they got infested with these beetles, and I think that's what killed this tree. Yeah, it kind of looks like it. They were doing their work underneath the bark, and uh, what did you guys have in mind for this tree? Could it be made into some kind of furniture, do you think? Oh, absolutely. I mean, the nice thing is there's so much log here, and it has all different sizes as you go up the trunk. What about bunk beds? Would that be possible? Absolutely, absolutely. You know, it's nice that we have the opportunity to do something with it because it's standing dead, it's dry. And I'm glad to see the tree won't go to waste. When you see that bunk bed, it'll always remind you that it came from this tree. All right. All right? We're going to get her done. Well, guys, this is what we got going on. Eric and Janice want to incorporate this 80-foot southern yellow pine tree into their house. Well, we can make a whole bunch of bunk beds out of that tree. <laughs> we got to drop her down. I didn't know anybody better than the Chainsaw Master. Where do you want them? Make sure we drop her right down the line here, Matt. When cutting down a tree, the first notch is cut at an angle on the front side of the tree in the direction we want the tree to fall. Like always, when you're felling trees, you know the tree could go anywhere at any time, so we need to be safe. Those limbs come down, that's going to pound you right in the ground. The second cut angles into the back, which destabilizes the tree and allowing it to fall forward. If you want to start your back cut, I'll follow it behind with wedges. Make sure it goes that way. If we don't do it right, the tree could fall in the wrong direction. Let's get this baby laid on the ground. All right, let's get it done. That's good. I'll cut her down. Cutting this notch will allow us to control the direction of the fall. I'll start her right here. A little bit higher, Matt. Yeah. We destabilize the trunk with the second cut. So now I'm going to drive the wedges into the tree and push it in the direction we want it to fall. Hey, Bob, why don't you cut up the pieces you need for the, the bunk the beds? Bed. Good job, Matt. All right. Now that the Metzger shell is up here in Texas and we got that tree down, it's time for Bob and I to head out to Utah to give the Timber Moose Lodge a facelift. We're meeting with Scott Twiggs, a general contractor who's worked on the lodge in the past, and he knows it very well. He's got the logs we need to overhaul the entryway, and he's going to be giving us a hand. Oh, man, logs are, these are gorgeous. Hey, you must be Scott. Oh, man, you got quite a load here, huh? Looks like you yeah. got everything. Got the, the vertical logs and, and that big header log right there. That's gorgeous. Yep. That's going to be a beast getting up in the place, huh? Uh, definitely. Yeah, well, now it's a matter of putting her together, huh? First thing we got to do is start stripping this ugly stuff off. This isn't Timber Moose Lodge, and this isn't Grand. We got to get rid of it. Matt and Spencer's families are here today, and their sons are watching me work. I love inspiring young kids, and who knows, maybe one of them will be a log craftsman one day. Oh, look at that. Huh. Well, that's a start. This is kind of the fun part, just taking off the old stuff, getting ready for a new look. 
This stuff was ready to come off. These windows are very fragile. The older the glass gets, the more brittle it gets, too. We got to watch this. This is an old thermal paint. It might just explode and shatter. All right, got it, Nate. Got it? Way too easy. Now we got to take the front door out, put the new vertical log post up there to support the massive log over the front. You got to remove this door, and then all we got left is transmute it. Now that it's kind of a clean slate, we got to cover it up for the night and then get going hard at it first thing in the morning. All right, Sounds let's like get to it. It's getting dark. We got the old material completely stripped. We're starting with the fresh slate. Now we're ready to put the big log slab on. It takes five of us to put this big log slab up. The hardest part is it's 800 pounds, it's 20 feet long, and we got to maneuver it around two posts that are holding up the entryway. What if we go up, it, it bells in here a little bit. Okay, push. You're going to have to saw that knot just a little bit flat. So if you do that, I think we're going to clear. Okay, go your way. Hey, good job, guys. Thing looks cool. And now it's time to install the door. This thing is perfect. The moose is beautiful. We gotta go get Matt and Spencer. They're down by the pool. <laughs> These kids are having fun doing cannonballs. We just finished up, man. Can't wait to yeah. see it. All right, well, let's, uh, let's get the crew together and I'm gonna show you guys. Yeah. Okay. All right, guys. <laughs> wow. Huh? That is incredible. That is beautiful. Now that's a grand entryway, huh? That is awesome. Matt and Spencer see this for the first time, and whoa, they are blown away. That is a timber moose. It is, and it's a one of a kind. I've never seen anything like it. Colors blend right in with that bronze finish. It's beautiful. It really is. That is awesome. Exactly yeah. what we wanted. The entranceway looks great, the door looks great, and all the work is done expertly. Oh, now that's exciting. a grand entryway, huh? How much does that weigh, Bob? Man, I think about 350 pounds. Yeah. What do you think of that massive log up on the top? <laughs> we said we wanted big. Yeah. We really did big. There's five guys it took to put that up there, but that goes up once and it's going to stay there for a long time. I just love how you tied it all together, got the new siding to match what we had. You did an awesome job. It's incredible. Oh, man. Thanks. Thanks. Exceeded expectations for sure. I know we did a really good job on this. This is done to last a lifetime. I can't wait for you guys to show this off. Well, I want to start with our family. Yeah, absolutely. Bring them on. Sure. All right. What do you think? We should name him. He's like another member of the family. Yeah. What? Let, let's name him Mr. Timber. Say Timber Moose. <laughs> the kids are loving it. This is a proper entryway for the Timber Moose Lodge. Back in Texas, things are coming to a close on the Metzger's cabin. 92 and three quarters might work. Today, Peter's laying sheeting up on the roof. And it's perfect timing because it's been nothing but rain here in Gilmer. <laughs> the mudroom cheated and nailed off and we're ready to put some tar paper on there. While Peter's finishing up on the roof, I'm going to go tackle an additional request made by Eric and Janice. 
Nate said, Bob, I gotta have bunk beds made for the Metzger's grandkids. Can you do it? I said, yes, I can. They wanted to have a tree used that we cut down earlier. This is the tree. I took the neat character piece of this tree with all these cool knots, and I cut it in half. That tree is gonna bolt against this. Then I'm gonna have to figure out some kind of ladder. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. I'm putting screws in from the backside so the screws aren't exposed. They're gonna wonder how these logs are staying in place. Hey, Todd. Hey, buddy, I wanna test these bunk beds out. I wonder if you can jump up on top of that, just test them out a little bit and see if they're gonna work. Don't hurt yourself now. Yeah, I tell you what, if I hold you, it's gonna hold anybody, I know that. And now I can say that this bunk bed is officially approved by Grizzly Bob. Then I'm gonna have to work on a ladder. They gotta have a way to access that top bunk. A few more and I'll be done. This is my last one. Everything's looking good. These kids are gonna grow up with this. They're gonna remember this the rest of their life. Right now we're working on this big log post. You have your gap above here, you need something to hold this log. We push this rod up into the log. We drill a one inch hole into the post. With time, as this log settles, it'll drive itself into this log, which will get tighter, and you won't have to come up here and make adjustments with screw jacks. Whoa! It came out of nowhere! Hey. Welcome to Texas! Help a lady down. Come on down. Woo. What's the theme? going with this Texas farm theme. Oh, really? You know? A real show Wow, piece. look at that. The Lone Star State. Do you need a hand getting this stuff in? I sure do. Thanks, guys. In the dining room, we have this massive oak farm table. The amount of cooking that's going to be happening here, this is going to do the job. The master bedroom is super simple and cozy. We have this really beautiful farmhouse bed. These are our awesome bunk beds at Bob Maine. I love them. They're so like tiny and little for the little kids. I love it. Putting these stones up here. They're coming up from northern Wisconsin, from King Quarry. It's a unique stone, and we're bringing them all the way down here to Texas to put on the Metzger's cabin. Windows are going in, roofers are here, roofs going on, and we're on the home stretch. The crew has just about got this house wrapped up, so tomorrow I can pick up the Metzgers and show them their new log home. I hope they absolutely love it. We're not far away now, we're just around the corner. It'll be fun to explore our own home. Yeah, absolutely. This is where we're gonna spend the rest of our years. We've been dreaming of building this cabin for 35 years, and the day's finally here. It feels incredible. Well, guys, this is where the best views are, right here. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Look at the size of that thing. Oh, I can't believe it. <laughs> huh? Porches are wonderful. Oh, those juniper posts just turned out nice. Wow. Isn't that something? Oh, that was a great choice. That was a great combination. Look at the size of those windows in the oh. front. Yeah, it lets all kinds of natural light Oh in. my goodness. That ridge pole really extends. It too. sure does. Wow. Well, well, there's so much more to see inside, and that's where you really feel at home. I'm ready. Let's get in there. Okay. Let's go. All right, guys. <laughs> Here's the first stop of many. Come on in. Oh, my. Oh, oh man. <laughs> what do you think? Wow. I'm overwhelmed. Well, this is your master bedroom. It's a special place. I thought we hit it right away. There's such easy access right off to your porch. Oh, this is great. This is just beautiful, This mate. looks nothing like it did when it was just a shell. Boy, this really puts a perspective on how huge these logs really are. Yeah. And they're full of character. Like I said, you really can see the heart grain and the knots and knobs. The Norwegian style logs behind the bed, full of character, knots. Looks like they were hand hewn. You know, guys, this is one of the most special rooms in the house, but there's so many more rooms to see. You wanna go check them out? Oh, yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. All right, guys, come on in. This is probably my favorite room. Oh, yeah. Is this <laughs> you the, did bunk the bunk bed? bed? It sure is. You know, I had Matt, one of my guys, cut the tree down, and Bob made a nice little bunk bed. 
There it is. Wow, it's, this it, is from our log. It is, it is, it's something special. Each rung is different. Is this made from wood from our property too? So we found some cedar laid out in the back and you know, Bob made some awesome little steps with a ton of character. Oh, Look at that. Oh, this great. Mm -hmm. What a fun room yeah. for our grandkids oh, and that to chair. visit. London is gonna love that chair. <laughs> She's gonna sit there and read. The grandkids are gonna have so much fun climbing up and down that ladder. Let's hope they don't jump off the top bunk. Well guys, here's your dining room area. And a little log partition wall leading you into the kitchen area. Oh, the kitchen <laughs> oh, is man. beautiful. I love this that is kitchen. Great. With that professional range and the professional hood, I'm gonna feel like a real chef when I'm cooking in that kitchen. And she does know how to cook. The whole family can gather around this dinner table. We can pull up a couple of high chairs for the little <laughs> ones. This is fantastic. Oh, this is a little special room up here. We we'll call it the fireman cave. Fireman cave, yeah. Oh, this is great. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Huh? The old red right there. Oh, uh, this is my solace. This is the place I'm really going to enjoy. I can get some work done up here in my fireman cave. It's just going to bring back so many memories. Look at there, Eric. There's your boots. It looks like they're ready for you to be called out in the middle of the night to go to a fire. How many times do I remember the boots sitting by the bed <laughs> ready for you to uh -huh. respond when you needed to? Yeah, I think they're for more display now. <laughs> <laughs> That's but true. you never know. Once a chief, always a chief, huh? There you go. <laughs> the loft is incredible. The way that they use the tongue and groove material, the angles in there, the heavy timber, it just pushes your eyes back to the collection of all the memorabilia I've got. Well, Janice, to Eric, this is probably his great room, but let's go downstairs and see the real great room. You want to check it out? I do. Wow. <laughs> this is fantastic. Look at how high that ceiling yeah. is. You know what I am amazed by are those log trusses in the living room. I had no idea they were going to be so big. Nate, you know what I love about the Norwegian logs is that they're flat on mm -hmm. the inside and it's so much easier to hang things yeah. on the walls, yeah. like paintings and yeah. art. We put each log on our 60-foot bandsaw mill and we flatten it down to that 8-inch diameter. And then once it's cut, we bring it over and we start peeling it and also we give it that hand-hewn look. Well, this is solid. And there's a great wall space. I mean, you can see the notches, how they all tie together, all the way up to that ridge pole, which weighs about 4,000 pounds and it's sitting on one continuous truss about 3,500 pounds. These are all built glass with craftsmanship and they're not going anywhere. This is such a comfortable room mm -hmm. all gathered around the fireplace here. I love the cowhide pillows and lampshades. Mm -hmm. It makes this room truly Texas. I lost words. This is just phenomenal. It was raining outside so we brought everybody in and just had some good old Texas barbecue right here in the great room. I think Nate really had a vision for what we wanted and what we needed. He told us that he was going to build our dream. And I think that he did that. This is it. This is truly Texas. I feel great knowing Eric and Janice are at ease and they finally have their log home to live in for the rest of their lives. Janice and I will enjoy this. And it's something we can pass on to our kids and they can pass on to their kids.